because starting in 1949, the CIA launched a pro program called the Congress for Cultural Freedom and started funneling money to anti-communist leftists. Generally, the people that made up the Congress for Cultural Freedom were followers of the Trotskyite Max Schachtman. And Schachtman, uh, after World War II, his followers, uh, one of them being Irving Kristol, who is the father of neoconservatism, started working for the CIA. And Irving Kristol was actually the director of the CIA's Congress for Cultural Freedom program, where they started covertly giving money to leftists uh, in order to put out an anti-Soviet uh, message. Um, and uh, the magazine Partisan Review, which was a purported to be a communist socialist magazine, and it was all over the college campuses. Every campus you went to, you could find Partisan Review. And it was this subversive communist magazine, except it, it like every issue was devoted to exposing the Stalinists. And uh, a lot of the, you know, what was done in Partisan Review magazine was equating the Soviets with the Nazis, right? And saying that, that it's basically the same system. And direct CIA payments to, to pay for their operations were supplemented by uh, the Ford Foundation and uh, the Rockefeller think tanks and other things. And various left-wing academics were getting subsidized by getting paid lots of money to have their articles appear in this magazine that was everywhere. And this was the conscious manipulation. And uh, you talk about the Frankfurt School and, and the rise of, of this new... And it's weird because on the right, they have this whole thing about cultural Marxism. Right. Well, well, what they're missing is that a lot of these like, cultural critics that really emphasize Gramsci really downplayed the idea of class struggle, uh, you know, you know, emphasized, uh, you know, you had Herbert Marcuse, who said that the working class was not revolutionary. The intellectuals were the revolutionaries. All of this was being covertly supported as a way to kind of direct intellectuals and leftists away from Marxism. And in the process, they changed really the nature of what leftism was, you know, the anti-populism came out. Susan Sontag is a really important voice in this milieu. And and so Hannah Arendt also comes out of this. Um, and anti-populism, the idea that average people are the enemy, that average people are dangerous, and if they ever get together and start fighting for their rights, uh, that's that's basically the same as Nazi Germany. That became a big theme in what it meant to be a leftist, this kind of intellectual nonconformity.